In the blistering heat of the dry Arava desert, in the middle of Israel, is an oasis of crops and electricity. Surrounded by palm trees, arid land and date farms, this groundbreaking research project, initiated by the Jewish National Fund USA in cooperation with the University of Arizona and the Kasser Joint Institute, has found a way to grow food in desert-like areas while producing electricity. The name is agrovoltaics, a combination of the words agriculture and photovoltaic, which just means solar panels. What you see behind me is like a sustainable, self-sufficient toolbox that you can take anywhere in the world. It allows for crops to grow and the solar panels you see behind me produce their own electricity. That electricity is used to water those crops and it can even be used to power a house. Dr. Tali Zahar explains that the program has grown everything from tomatoes and lettuce to spinach and kale through this new autonomous system. But it has taken time and patience to develop the experiments and turn them into reality. The main idea of agrivoltaic is actually harvest the sun twice. You're using the same land for producing food and producing energy. You don't need to choose. Now you're actually if you go around Israel and other places, you have to choose. choose. Either you use the land for producing electricity, for solar panels or other form of renewable energy, or you use it to grow food, to grow crops and agriculture. Mm -hmm. And here we are saying, let's do both at the same land. The project can be found in different versions in various locations. It's been evolving and expanding for years, and this design is just about ready to be taken from the desert in Israel to the rest of the world. Though the benefits from this agrivoltaics project really are the local communities. So in whether you're talking about an off-grid, which is not connected to the national kind of grid, so you're talking about remote communities in the U.S., whether we're talking about indigenous populations, smaller farms, kibbutzes in Israel, smaller communities in Africa, that's where you really see that connection. And largely it's because in all of these dryland places, it's just too hot for the crops to produce. The sun is just too intense. Its energy is just pounding the leaves all day. And the solar is like if you were able to carry a little parasol over, overhead during that hottest part of the day and offer that protection. So in, that means that you can, in these places that have no food security or really bad water security, you can actually get food, energy, and water all in the same parcel of land. <laughs> One of the main goals of the initiative is to support developing countries around the world. That means taking the research to communities in need, but also to bring students from those countries to learn the skills on site and then take them home. Abby and Rosalind from Kenya are in the process of completing their internship. This project is special because it is a system that ensures there's uh, production of energy, at the same time there's full security and also there's production of water. 15% of Kenya's 53 million people rely on unimproved water sources like wells, rivers and ponds. And currently, more than 3 million people are severely food insecure after three consecutive failed rainy seasons. A project like this could help change that. The women are thrilled that they found a way to grow crops in sand and that they can bring the technical know-how with them back home and actually have a direct impact on rural communities and potentially save lives. Farming in the desert is like, it's a miracle. Yeah, it's so, it's awesome. According to Talia Tzur, Chief of Staff of Jewish National Fund USA in Israel, the communities of the Arava Desert have become experts in growing and exporting food through years of work and development. But this initiative takes the latest technology to a new level. There is agrovoltaic in other areas. There is uh, water uh, desalination, local water desalination plants in other areas. Solar panels for sure. But there is no other place in the world that you have all of them together as one holistic approach that you can copy, paste and put it somewhere else. That's the importance of the project. With climate change becoming an increasingly dire factor in food development and production of clean drinking water, the fund is financing other research initiatives as well. 
In desert conditions like these, where it's so dry and hot, efficiency is crucial for food security. So from one project that took the energy of the sun twice to grow food, we're now going to see a project that uses water twice. So we are actually standing in a greenhouse uh, in the Arava Valley. And what we're seeing behind us is a very interesting research. It's called aquaponics. Aquaponics essentially is a system, enclosed system, where you can grow fish. You can't see them, but they're inside here. So we have tilapia fish growing in the tanks, so you can eat them. Um, and the water from the fish goes to the lettuce. So we use the water twice, right? Once for the fish, once to grow food. And uh, we hope in the future to install solar panels so you can make it off-grid completely and a very holistic system. Is it good? <laughs> Tanya explains that they're also looking for alternative ways to feed the fish, to bring the cost down and make the whole process independent and disconnected. Once again, just by using what nature already offers in the most effective way possible, with the goal to help feed tens of thousands of people around the world in a sustainable way.